Hey everybody, today I'm going to show you how to make a pressurized fluid dispenser. You can buy these commercially for about $125 to $200, or if you just watch this video, you can build one yourself for about $25 bucks out of a standard garden sprayer. They're pretty much the exact same thing. They might be missing a few bells and whistles, but the end result is going to be exactly the same as one of the commercially available units. Because it's a sealed system, you're not going to have to worry about any moisture contamination getting inside the fluids, and you can leave the thing filled up with whatever fluid that you need, whether that's transmission fluid, gear oil, power steering fluid, or whatever you need, it's going to stay safe inside of this container. And because garden sprayers are made to withstand extremely corrosive chemicals, transmission fluid or gear oil or motor oil is not going to harm the internal components of this. So sit back and watch how easy it is to make one of these. The parts that you're going to need in order to make this is a standard garden sprayer kit. That will come with a garden sprayer itself, as well as the fittings, hoses, and pickup tube. You'll need a five foot length of clear vinyl hose. This hose is three eighth inch outside diameter by a quarter inch inside diameter. Two small worm gear hose clamps. And then also I use a 3 8 inch PEX ball valve. Because I use the PEX ball valve, it has barbed fittings on both sides that when I slip it inside the clear vinyl hose, it will create a lot tighter fit and will not allow fluid to ever leak. Okay, with the accessories that came with the garden sprayer itself, the only parts that we're going to be using are this clear tube that goes inside the tank itself and then this little fitting here that will screw onto this outer fitting on the outside of the garden sprayer itself. So where the black vinyl tube meets this clear pickup tube, just pry the two apart and you can see that it's just a small little barbed fitting on there. You'll also take this corresponding collar off of the black vinyl tube because we will use that later on with our clear vinyl tube to attach it to the garden sprayer itself. Okay, our next step is to take the clear vinyl hose, take that collar that we just took off of the black vinyl hose, and then insert the clear vinyl hose through the center of it. Push it in maybe, I don't know, two or three inches. Then take your clear pickup tube and on that barbed fitting, insert the clear vinyl hose. Now the two are pushed back together just like it was with the black vinyl hose. Take your pickup tube, insert it into the fitting on the side of the garden sprayer, and then you'll push it all the way to the bottom. There is a little O-ring on this collar, so when this fitting is screwed down tight, that O-ring is actually going to press in there, and it will not allow any air to leak in or out, nor any fluid to leak in or out, so it'll make a real tight seal at that point. So we'll just press that down by hand, and then push the collar down, and we will screw it clockwise to tighten it up onto that fitting. And there we go. That, uh, that little o-ring takes a little bit of pressure to get tight. But we'll get this on here. I'm right-handed, sorry guys. So, <laughs> screw that down tight. And now we have a clear vinyl hose coming out of our garden sprayer. Just to try this out, if you have the end of the hose right here and I pump the garden sprayer up, it will. this is where all the pressure will come out of, is the end of this hose. So I'll hold my thumb over the end of the hose and I will pressurize the garden sprayer. And I think you'll be able to hear it when I let my thumb off. And if there was fluid in there, that would be fluid coming out, not air. So the next step is to take about maybe a foot to foot and a half of this um, this five foot vinyl hose, and then we're going to cut it right here. So I'm going to take my pair of snips, and then I'm just going to cut this about, like I said, about a foot down. There you go. Now I have about a one foot section coming out of the tank, and then I have about a four foot section left over. You'll take one of your little worm gear hose clamps, slide it over the end where it would meet the tank, and then you'll take your ball valve and you will insert the uh, ball valve inside of that clear vinyl hose. This will make a very tight fit. You know, the, 
little hose clamps may not even be necessary, but I figured just for safety's sake, I don't want to have leaks where I don't need them. So we'll just twist this back and forth, and it is an extremely tight fit. Um, like I said, once again, I am right-handed, so I apologize for the camera angle. But we'll just work that back and forth. There we go. We have one more little lip to go over. And it will be completely inserted on there. As tight as this is, I honestly don't think you would need that hose clamp, but I'll go ahead and tighten it up anyway. There you go. Now it is installed on the ball valve. So what we'll do now is close the ball valve, and then I'm going to do the same thing. I want to pressurize this tank. Maybe 10 pumps. Don't go way overboard with it. It's holding pressure, and if we open the ball valve, now we will hear air. That's what we're going for. We want a nice, tight, sealed system. And really, the last step is to just take this length of hose and insert it on the other side of the ball valve. So once again, I'm going to take the clear vinyl hose, grab the ball valve securely in my hand, and then twist and push this clear vinyl hose onto the ball valve itself. You know, with my original one, I used the actual sprayer mechanism that came with the garden sprayer, but I didn't like that because I had to hold in on the handle. And with a ball valve, I can just open it up and it will let the pressure out, and I don't have to sit there and hold it to let all the fluid go through. So, twist this back and forth, and now I will insert the other hose clamp from the other end of this hose, so I can tighten them both up on both sides of that ball valve and we would not have to ever worry about anything leaking around there. So I'll take that. I have a quarter inch little nut driver, but it also takes a screwdriver. Just nut drivers don't pop off like a screwdriver would. And I will tighten this down. These are very small little worm gear clamps. They were the, I think about the smallest ones I could find at Lowe's because the, of the size of this hose, it had to be extremely small. But honestly, if you can't find these as tight as it fits on that PEX fitting, I, I don't even think you would need it. So tighten that down. This other side, do the same thing. I'll tighten it down. And pretty much will be complete. It'll be, uh, now I'll just need to test it. So I'll put some fluid in there. And then I'll show you guys that, you know, everything works fine with it. I've been using that other one that you know, is the inferior design as far as I'm concerned because I was still using the sprayer mechanism. This ball valve is really going to work a lot better. With a ball valve, you can control the flow very easily because you can very uh, lightly open it or open it all the way just depending on how much you want to let through at once. So there we go. Both are very tight. The ball valve is shut. If the handle goes along with the uh, tube, that means it's open. But when it's uh, crossways, the, the ball valve is shut. So we'll pump this up once again. And uh, now we'll have the end of our hose. And you can see everything is nice and tight. There's no leaks. And I can control this the flow of this just by how much I open up this ball valve. So if I just want a real little small flow, I can just barely open it. Or if I want full throttle, I can open it up all the way. And because this is a fairly small little area, it's not going to uh, have a ton of air in there like you would with a air compressor tank. But when you're dealing with fluids, very little pressure will end up pushing an entire gallon of fluid out of this little hose. So what you would need to do uh, when you actually use this is take the fill plug off the side of your transmission, insert the end of this hose inside the transmission, just make sure it's not going to fall out, and then pressurize this little tank, open the ball valve, maybe just a little bit, I don't think you'd have to do it all the way, and you will see the fluid level drop. And eventually, you'll see the transmission fluid coming out the side of the transmission or the side of the transfer case. 
you turn the ball valve shut, put your plug in, and it has been refilled, and you don't have to deal with little um, hoses or funnels or you know something hand-powered. You can just set it and forget it, or just set it and watch it, and then you'll be good to go. Just to demonstrate how well this works, I'll unscrew the top of the garden sprayer now, set it to the side, and then I'm going to take just some regular uh, motor oil and put in here. And I will show you how well uh, the mechanism works. It will pressurize very quickly and it will do all of your work for you because all you need to do is basically watch it. Especially, like I said, if you're filling up transmissions or transfer cases, this really, really, really makes it easy. So you just take the garden sprayer itself, pour the fluid right in the top, I'll fill it up, I don't know, we'll go about halfway. I don't want to, I'm not going to drain out half a gallon of this, but so you can see it in there. So you can see it filling up now. And uh, alright, we're at half a gallon. I'll put the top back on the motor oil itself. And then I have just a little clear jar over here. So you can see it being filled up. So I'll take the lid off the little jar, I'll put the top um, pump mechanism back on the top of the garden sprayer itself and tighten it up. And then like I said, try this with different pressures. I mean, I would start out with maybe 10 pumps to start. Don't overdo it because you may end up blowing this hose out. Any garden sprayer, if you've ever worked with it around chemicals, you know you don't want to overdo it. So. We'll start. Okay, I didn't have the lid on all the way tight. Sorry, guys. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. All right. It's been pressurized up to ten. I'll put the little tube in here. And then I will open this ball valve up. You can see the fluid going through the clear vinyl hose and eventually it will make its way into the jar. And it seems to be going fairly quickly. You can see it going in there. I mean, you got to think, if you're working with transmissions, you don't want it blasting in there because you end up dumping about a gallon of fluid out on the ground. But at the speed that this is moving, I mean, this is just, like I said, 10 pumps. So here it is. Let's see if we can do it sideways. You can see the uh, fluid level increasing inside of the jar. This is a quart jar. And uh, yeah, I'll just let it sit here for a second and fill up. But uh, just with 10 pumps, I'm sure that this quart jar will fill up. And I'll, fast, I'll let it fast forward just to, so you can see it fill up. Okay, it's about halfway filled up. We can pump the pressure up a little bit more now. Like I said, I didn't want to overdo it and then cause something uh, to leak. But you can just pump it up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I don't like to overdo it because I don't like to leave pressure in these tanks. And I'll show you how to re release that pressure at the end so you don't have to worry about creating some big oil spill in your garage. Now the quart jar is about halfway filled up with motor oil. Let's say right now it was running over the top. All you would need to do is just take the ball valve, close the ball valve, and now this line is still pressurized between the tank and the ball valve itself, but from the uh, ball valve into the actual unit, you can see there's no more pressure. So we'll take this, clean off the end, and at this point you would be putting your fill plug back in and uh, the repair will be complete. When you're done, you just need to take the end of the hose itself, insert it back into the container. In this case, it's a motor oil container, but if you had transmission fluid or whatever you're working with, just insert it back into the container, turn the valve to fully open, and then pump this up maybe 15 or 20 times, and then just walk away. All of the fluid that's left in this container will then drain back into the original container this will be almost completely empty, and it will blow air through this line. It will drain everything great. So that's what I'll do now. You can see it um, flowing up through the hose. 
and you just let the uh, air pressure do the work for you. So you just lock it in place. The motor oil in this case is draining back through the line, back into the container, and once this is drained, everything will be complete. So now you know how to make a pressurized fluid dispenser. Like I said, these take about 15 minutes to make. They only cost 20 to 25 dollars and you will save at least 100 bucks over the professional brands. One thing I want to note, please do not use these with gasoline or combustible materials. There is no room for expansion in here and you will pose an extreme fire hazard if you use that with the wrong type of fluids. So you really only want to use this with non-combustible fluids or oils. If you like this video, please click like. If you like my channel, please click subscribe. And thanks for watching.